the animated cartoon version of Animal Farm was first made in 1955. It was the work of John Hallis and Joy Batchelor and was three years in the making. The film contained a remarkable piece of vocal orchestration as one man was responsible for all the animal voices, actor Morris Denham. Morris Denham, at what point in the production of this cartoon film were you involved? What stage did they want your voices recorded? Oh, well, fairly early on, you see, because they couldn't do the animation until they got the voice, because that's the way around they do it. They yes. They get the, the voice and then they animate to the, the lip movements of the words and so on. So I came in on it, oh, fairly early in 1952, I think. But the trouble was that they, nobody quite knew whether it was going to be all the actual animal noises, just the sort of uh, <laughs> like that, you see, or whether it, uh, it had to be words coming through the sort of, uh, like, revolution and that sort of thing, or a perfectly plain voice. So that we did it all oh, in various different ways in order to try and find the, the perfect way. Uh, and and it's a, actually, it's a mixture of all of them. There have been yeah. solo performances of this kind, although not of this length before, by other mm. uh, famous voices like Mel Blanc, for example, but not for a, a long feature film. One man to do all this work. Yes, but it was spread over three years. Mm. You remember? <laughs> See, I mean, one month I'd go <laughs> in and do Squealer, which I particularly enjoyed. You know, Squealer's the, yes. the, the, one, the, the, the one with the very high voice, you see. <laughs> And then months later, I might go in and do Napoleon or something like that in, in a totally different way. How did you decide so, on, on the sound these individual voices would make? Presumably, you'd read the book fairly closely. I'd read the book closely, and also, you see, the, all the, the whole film was laid out in cartoon drawings of all the animals. They had their, all their character drawings. There'd be maybe 50 drawings of Napoleon with various expressions from yes. which I could get the character in which to put the voice to. Mm. See, so Who finally mm. decided when you had the right inflection, as it were, for a particular character? Oh, well, that was John Hallis mm. and Joy Batchelor, of course. But as I say, I think there were bits of all the recordings we did mm. put in at various times. Mm. But of course, the, the chief trouble was the various reactions of the crowds, like, you know, the hens and the chickens and the... Hens and the chickens, and the, uh, the sheep and the pigs, and things yes. when they answered and uh, spoke up. Now, that was dozens and dozens of the same track laid on top of each other, and uh, in, in order to make it a chorus. You see, it was mostly my voice, but in all the different characters, and put all together, and you get a crown. Uh, did you? Mm. You have children, haven't you? I have. Yes. yes. Did they see the film when it was first shown? Uh, no, I don't think they did. I don't mm. think. They I think, I think my, uh, my younger son has seen it in the, at school, actually. I, I, I just wondered how they might have reacted. Uh, this is an actor of some distinction, a man who's played Shakespeare and Shaw and others, uh, making animal noises. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> I, mean um, I think that's all part and parcel of the job, mm -hmm. after all. It's, uh, you saw Animal Farm again tonight? I did, yes. Mm -hmm. How did you think it stood I out? I was enthralled by it. Mm. I think it's the most exciting. It's a long time since I've seen it, but I think it holds wonderfully well. The fact that it is a, a cartoon film might suggest mm. to people unfamiliar with Orwell's work that this was uh, essentially a children's entertainment. Isn't that a bit frightening for children? Oh, I think it is. Mm. But I, I don't know, when you see, see some of the things on television, is it as frightening as those, after all? It's the, mm. I don't think it is. But I, it is frightening, but I think it might make them think. I don't know what age shouldn't be see, shouldn't see it about six perhaps seven have you any children no <laughs> you, you hadn't tried it out on them at all no i had to put then. myself into a, ch a child's shoes and in order yes. to yeah. ask the question in the mm. first place Where, did any of the voices that occur to you tonight listening to them would you have done them differently given the chance uh, <coughs> no i don't think so i don't think mm. i could i mean I, I think one has only one donkey voice at <laughs> all, you know, it's a, it's a curious <laughs> sound, and if you can get anywhere near it, then you can't mm. make it any different. I mean, you can just try and do a, a donkey voice. <laughs> this In is fact, I, I wouldn't dare to try and do it now, because I, I can't remember how I did it. <laughs> uh, this is probably a, an irrelevance. Well, so I'm, mm. I'm going to put it to you. Um, Orwell's choice of animals is rather arbitrary. Pigs are swine. The word is pejorative in the first place, so yes. they're the villains in the piece. 
the horse, who's a noble animal, of course, is the hero boxer, mm -hmm. and so on. Do you think it's rather unfortunate with, with the fact that we arbitrarily choose pigs as the villains in the piece. Uh, no, I, I think it was rather lucky, actually, from the cartoon point of view, because I think the pigs have got such faces that can look like Napoleon or can look like uh, Squealer or mm. Snowball. And I, I think they've got the most expressive faces of all the animals. I can't imagine any other animal doing it, can you, having a face? No. I mean, a, a, a features which you could change mm like John Harris and Joy Batchelor have, into yes. the, the almost... Well, well I, I say Hitler because we had very, very much had Hitler in mind, rather than Orwell's original idea of Stalin, I think. Did for, you? The, for the finishing thing, the, the, the speeches of Hitler, yes, I endeavoured yes. to get the, the last speeches of Napoleon in the type of Hitler mm. haranguing his stormtroopers. Uh, it raises another issue altogether. Do you think <coughs> that Orwell's satire <coughs> may have lost some of its point today, now that um, Stalin and Trotsky, for example, are no more? Uh, I don't think so, no, mm. because I think anybody coming to it not knowing the book or anything would, would think of the Nazis more than the, uh, the Russians, wouldn't you? Could be, any totalitarian I think so, yes. regime. Yeah, any, yes. any totalitarian, yes. and that is the most immediate one.